We've been talking about verbs lately, and it's time to talk about nouns again. You may recall we've talked about nouns in first declension, that first group of nouns that form all their cases the same way. But if you notice that the nouns on page 34 look a little bit different, and those are nouns from the second declension, or the second group of nouns. Now the first question you may have is how are we ever going to tell the difference between first and second declension? How, how do you know which declension a noun belongs to? Well, there's a very simple little chart, and we're going to put it up here for you. In the left-hand column, you want the second dictionary entry, and in the right-hand column, the declension number. Now we're going to add to this chart over time, but right now it's very, very easy. You look at the second dictionary entry, which you notice we've done that with verbs, too. We spent a lot of time looking at second dictionary entry. But the second entry ends with an A-E, words like puella, puellae, girl, or silwa, silwai, forest, or insula, insulae, island. That indicates a first declension noun. And if you look at the words on page 34, words like servus, servi, the second dictionary entry ends with that I, pronounced long E, or equus, equi, that gives us a second declension noun. And as I say, we're going to add to that as time goes on, but that'll be a good place for us to start. So what we want to see is what the cases look like for second declension. So here we go, second declension. And we'll set up our singular and plural columns as before. We'll drop the noun cases down the side. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. And right now on your paper, see if you can come up with the basic use for each of the noun cases. So go ahead and hit pause on the video and come up with the uses for each of the noun cases. Okay, assuming that you've got that, you should have found subject or nominative, genitive shows possession, dative is indirect object, accusative is direct object, ablative is object of preposition. Now we know what all those endings would be for those cases in first declension, but what do they look like in second declension? Well, if we've got a subject and there's only one of it, in second declension it ends with us. In genitive singular for possession, it ends with that long I, pronounced E. Indirect object dative is O. Accusative direct object is um. And ablative direct, yeah, sorry, object of preposition is O. Nominative plural is that long I, pronounced E again. Genitive orum, O-R-U-M. Dative plural I-S. Accusative plural OS and ablative plural IS. So without me saying anything further, let's see what you can do. And maybe you can take that word, let's take that word carus from page 34. Carus, cari, masculine, wagon. All right. See if you can decline that word. We'll set the chart up for you. Singular and plural. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative down the side. See if you can decline that word in all the cases, singular and plural, just as we used to do with first declension. Go ahead and hit pause on the video now and give that a try. All right, if you follow the steps, then you know what to do. You say, wait, what steps? Well, it's the same steps as with first declension. As we said back then, the nominative singular, we're just going to draw that right in from the dictionary entry, carus. Genitive singular, we're going to draw that right in from the dictionary entry, cari. And then if you remember, we're going to drop something from the second dictionary entry. It's going to be the very thing we use to recognize that this is second declension. We're going to drop that I off of there. C-A-R-R -R becomes a stem. As I keep saying, I always like to write the stem down everywhere. That way we know we've got it. And now we're ready for the endings. So for dative singular, we've got caro, accusative singular, carum, 
Ablative singular, caro. Nominative plural, we've got several carts as the subject, cari. Genitive plural, carorum. Dative plural, caris. Accusative plural, caros. And ablative plural, caris. Well, let's see if we can put this together in a sentence and, and make some sense out of all this. All right, we've got quite a bit of vocabulary that we can work with now. So we're going to reach back and get some of that vocabulary from another chapter, mix it up with some of this, put it in the blender, and see what we can come up with here. All right. So let's see here. Maybe we've got Puelli Equos Spectant. Okay. When I'm looking at a sentence, the first thing I want to do is figure out what case and number each of the nouns is. So I say puella. Now, oh, which declension is that? Is that a first or a second declension? Now, well, I look that up in the dictionary, and I find puella, puellae, feminine, the word for girl. Well, that AE tells me that's first declension. So if I look back at my first declension endings, I see that puellae could be nominative plural, could also be genitive singular, and it could also be dative singular. And then this word equus, which is from that new vocabulary on page 34, we see equus, equi, masculine, the word for horse. Well, that's second entry ending in I tells me that's second declension. Well, the new endings we've got, E-O-S, can only be one thing. That's accusative plural. And then I look at my verb. I go, okay, well, that N-T, that's a plural verb ending. If you recall, that means they are doing something. So I need some plural subject. And I say, well, okay, can, can horses be the, the plural subject? It's plural. But that OS says it's accusative. So that tells me the horses are not doing the action. Now, genitive and dative here, those are both singular forms, so I know those can't be right. But sure enough, puellae can be plural and nominative, which makes it the subject. So if I look at this sentence, I've got the girls watch the horses. Now, it would make just as much sense to say the horses watch the girls, and that, that certainly could make sense. But I know for a fact that the horses are not doing the action because that OS, accusative ending, means they are receiving the action as the direct object. And that gives us a look at second declension nouns.